Morning, morning, y'all. It's Mary at Yard Art R Us. I hope you guys are having a good day. It's Friday, and I am super glad it's Friday. It even seems like the weather might not be as hot today. So I'm gonna show you guys how to paint a bird feeder. We actually came out with this blank some time ago, probably really during the summer, but um, I never got around to painting it. So, morning Debbie, how are you? Debbie, uh, you saw me on the other page this morning at the store, they're unloading that trailer. But I came home, decided to work here, because <laughs> I think it's better here than it is over there right now. So, y'all say hi when you come in and let me know you're here. I'm gonna show you how to paint a bird feeder. We actually have these blanks at the store. I Windexed this because uh, it's been sitting around really since the summer. Y'all, sometimes I don't get to my projects as timely as I think I'm going to in the beginning. Hey, Paula. Hey, Jennifer. How are y'all? I'm glad y'all are here. So, <clears throat> we have the bird feeder, and it's one of my favorites in that um, the bird feeder is just something that's good all year round. I want to say, y'all, I can't remember, but I think I did a lot of these back in um, the spring, and we sold them at the store, and I know the blanks were there. Yeah, y'all spread the love for me if you don't mind. Y'all know, after everything I've been going through uh, with the, the social media gods, what my life has been like. So, if you wouldn't mind spreading the love, that would be awesome. So, I'm going to start out doing my birds. I have three pinks and two yellow birds. So, I'm going to start out with that. I'm going to thin this paint down quite a bit because I can see it's gotten kind of gummy on me. So if you're using paint from us or you're using a latex house paint like what we do, don't be afraid to put some water in there if that paint starts to get gummy on you. I don't know a lot about the acrylics paints because uh, I, I haven't used those in a long time, so I'm not sure if putting water in those would be a good thing or not, to, to be very honest. Um, so I'm not sure about that. Hey Brandy, how are you? Who doesn't love a bird feeder? I still have to come up with a bird house. I haven't come up with a house. A house is harder, y'all, in that you've gotta worry about um, the enclosure of the house. So, a bird feeder is a little easier just because it is um, open. You got those open sides, it's not totally enclosed. So, I'm gonna start with this little cute little birdie here. And there's, because this is kind of a smaller design, y'all, I'm not gonna get crazy with a lot of brush stroking because there's just not room. So when you look at this, you've got, what the heck, y'all? I think I'm missing some parts. Whatever, I'll just go with what I got. Because it looks like I have four walls, which would be enough for two feeders, but only two roofs would only be enough for one feeder, which is probably true. That's probably the way it's gonna go down today. Uh, but we, um, I wanted to kind of do a birdhouse, and maybe I can do that for the spring, but that's a little bit different uh, worrying about the design because a house is usually all enclosed. So I'm just gonna put some very basic or what I would call basic shading on there. And with that color, I just put the shading brush in the water, but with this same color, I'm gonna take the script liner and I'm just gonna really get a lot of paint down into that CNC line. So I'm not going to use a different outline color for this guy. I think by the time I get some uh, shading orange all around here, we're gonna have enough color, it's gonna look good. I don't wanna put something like a black on here, y'all, because it just really, to me, gets this whole thing way too dark. Now, you definitely, if you want a darker outline color, you could definitely do that. There's nothing wrong with that. But that's not what I'm gonna go for this morning. I thought I'd, call, I thought I'd catch y'all in the morning. I know I usually am on at night, but I have a paint party tonight, so I won't be able to get on tonight. We're doing um, a canvas party at the store. And then tomorrow we have a wreath party and the wreath party is sold out. It's the witchy leg. So we'll be busy this weekend at the store. My sister Kelly actually does the wreath parties. I just kind of show up for moral support, figure maybe I can learn how to do a wreath, y'all, because I don't know anything about how to do a wreath. So, hey Sam, how are you? 
I am showing you guys how to paint a bird feeder. We actually have this one at the store as a blank. And um, it is really an easy, pretty easy design. And the thing about a bird feeder is it's just good year round. Okay, I'm just kind of coming in here, putting this shading yellow. So that's all, my bird is just gonna be two colors. I'll come back and I'll put some shading, I'll put some white highlights on there. But he's just going to be yellow and white or pink and white. That's what my birds are gonna be on here. So anyway, I think it'll be really cute. And it's a really, I tell you for years, well, years ago I used to make bird feeders uh, and I would give them away as gifts and everybody always liked that. I, I started giving things away as gifts because I, I didn't have the money to, to pay for what I thought would be a good gift. The problem was that is that everybody kind of wants you to always make them something. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> hey, Lisa, how are you? Hey, hey, Ava, good to see you. I am painting a, um, a bird feeder. I, I wanted to say a bird house, but it is not a bird house, y'all. It's a bird feeder. I got to get my, my act together make sure I call it the right thing. Okay, so I have my shading yellow. Now let's look at and go for our pink birds, which is these two walls. So these shapes right here would be the walls of your bird feeder, right? And then of course you have the top, which is gonna be a roof over here. And underneath you have the actual, and I don't have that with me, it's out in the shop, the base, which would actually hold the, would hold the bird seed. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, so let's do some pink and um, gonna work on making my pink birdies look cute. I've got this, this is a, um, a light pink. I think we call it a number 25 light pink and I'm going to use some shading here in the shading pink. And I just am trying to kind of keep it simple. Not put, I'm not putting a whole, whole lot on here because this is a smaller bird, okay? Just pretty, <clears throat> excuse me, pretty simple. So let's come down here. And I'll do the same thing that I did on that yellow one. I'll rinse out my uh, script liner and I will go ahead and use this same color while I have it on my brush. And I'll do this. He's gonna have a pretty pink beak, or she is, I guess, whichever you wanna think of it as. Something like that. And then I'll probably do something like this, just kinda come around the eye a little bit. I'm gonna come in there with black, y'all. But I'm going to, um, put some pink around it. He's got little tweety, tweety bird legs here. And uh, we've sold quite a few of these at the store because people like bird feeders. So I'm gonna come here, something like that, over here. And again, I didn't put a lot of colors on this little guy because uh, I really think with the design that we have, you don't need it. You know, when you're doing something like the turkeys we do, those things have like 17 colors. But this is kind of a whimsical little bird, so it doesn't need a whole lot. Yeah. Y'all, I think he's cute. I like that. Yeah, super cute. I'm gonna put the, I'll do the black eyes on him later. And I'm just taking this script liner and covering that C and C line, y'all. That's what I'm doing. Just covering that C and C line. And kind of come up here.
something like that. And then do his little twiggy little, little feet down here. Y'all, I've already uh, had technology issues this morning. I was at the store doing a live because we have a, a truck in from Laredo. We've got a lot of Talavera and metal art that we're unloading this morning. And already my technology wanted to give me a hard time saying my Wi-Fi signal wasn't good. I know it wasn't my phone because I have a brand new phone, which, as y'all know, costs a lot of money. I don't know what it is with those phones, y'all, but they're not playing with their prices. They, they ain't playing with that. All right, so let's work on, I'm going to work on the little tree branch. So my walls are pretty much done with the exception of the orange. And I'm going to come back in just a little bit and do that. These are the roof parts right here. And I'm going to put just a little bit of um, shading brown on here. Something like this. And again, I can't get a whole lot on here just because this is a small area. Smaller design right in here. But I'm just going to put some on there. Just enough to give it that. Now, I'm going to go back and I'm going to pick up this. Um, hold on a minute. Pick up my script liner and I'm going to come back and I'm going to outline this. I'm going to outline this tree branch in a um, shading red. And I'm going to try to keep my brush strokes a little bit light at the same time getting enough paint to fall down into that C and C line. So I don't have as much paint on here as what I normally would, but I've got enough to cover that C and C line, y'all. Something like that. And then I'll come over here and just outline it. I'm outlining my leaves and my little tree branch in this shading red. There we go. Yeah, he's so cute. Tell me what y'all are doing this weekend. We might get some rain on Sunday. So are y'all going to stay indoors? Are y'all going to stay outdoors? Saturday, I don't have anything planned on Saturday. And y'all, I have such a good feeling about that. I don't know if you're like me. Are y'all like this? Some of the best times I've ever had. Is when I don't have anything planned and I get up that morning and I think today I'm gonna and then fill in the blank I like days like that so I do have a paint party tonight but I don't have a paint Kelly has that wreath party tomorrow but that's really not my responsibility per se so who knows what I'm gonna do tomorrow such a good feeling I don't have anything planned for tomorrow and I don't have anything planned for Sunday y'all isn't, isn't that good so I'm gonna get up and do what I feel like in that moment this week has been a long week, and y'all, we took, uh, we didn't work on Monday like we normally would. I worked a little bit, but still, sometimes those three or four day weeks are just as hard or harder <laughs> than a five day work week, and I don't know why that is. So I just about got my tree branch done. Something like this. I kind of do that. Yeah. Y'all, the thing about a bird feeder, that is going to be good year round. And if it's not for the birds that part of the that time of the year, it's for decoration. I like I made these I painted my bird feeders very bright colors because if you paint a bird feeder a green color or a brown color, it's really going to blend in with the uh, vegetation, landscape whatever. Now, if you want it to blend in, that's good, but I wanted mine to stand out. So I'm going to do something like that. Hey, Debbie. Hey, Brandy. How are y'all? I'm glad you're here. And Marlene, girl, I want y'all to know this weekend I don't have a whole lot planned. And I'm excited. I'm super excited about that. Uh, tell me, what are y'all doing this weekend? Are y'all staying home? Are y'all running up and down the road? I don't know. With the COVID variant and stuff, maybe people are staying home more. I'm a homebody to begin with, y'all, so staying home is not a punishment for me. Not a punishment at all. I stay home very well. Of course, I, I don't have kids that I'm raising that I run up and down the road to take them to this and that. So, you know, if you've got kids and stuff and they're in school and in activities, so that's kind of different. 
But since that's not the stage of life that I'm in, I stay home a lot. And I can honestly tell you I enjoy that. I mean, sometimes I'll tell Bruce, okay, let's get in the truck, let's get out of here, because we've been at home for so long. But for the most part, he's pretty much a homebody. Oh, you got it. You know, Ava, I was just looking at my porch leaners that I haven't finished either. Can you believe I have four porch leaners and every single one of them are not finished? I actually have eight of them. Four of them are halfway finished. Four of them I haven't done anything to. I got to get on it. Yeah, and maybe I'll get to porch leaners next week. Because I don't, I just have a feeling I'm not going to get to them this week. But you know what? Porch leaners are always a popular item. And I haven't done them in a couple of years just because I've been so busy. But I said, I'm going to do porch leaners this year. If you can find decent wood, y'all. Now, Ava, you're not local, but I did put, speaking of porch leaners, I did put some uh, blanks in, um, in our website. So if people wanted to do porch leaners and buy those five foot tall Baltic birch blanks from us, they're five foot tall by 10 foot wide. They are in the store. Uh, but as far as you are, I don't think that shipping is gonna be good for you on that. Okay, so we have that. Now let's go back. Y'all, I think I'm kinda at the point where I need to let this dry a little bit. I am gonna work on his eyes, but I'm gonna let that dry a little bit around there. I, all I'm gonna do is put some black in here and some a little bit of black there. But what I think makes this look good, y'all, and you gotta really make sure you do this step or something close to it if you want it to look good. I'm sorry, uh, 10 inches wide. <laughs> 10 feet. That's a big old, that's a Texas size porch, y'all. <laughs> no, five foot tall, 10 inches wide, if I remember right, that's exactly, uh, they might've been 9.75s, either 10 or 9.75. And, um, but I have had a hard time trying to find anything in the way of getting decent wood for porch leaners. Now, I'm, this is really wet right here, so I'm kind of being careful. And I'm gonna just kind of come over it a little bit like that and call that good, okay? Because I don't want to mess up the painting that I just did. So I'll kind of come over that. And I'm gonna let that dry a little bit more and I'll come back and fix that. So I'd probably do something like this, y'all. And then of course, y'all know I'm gonna come in here and put white on everything to highlight it, okay? Really, I probably should have done before the video. I would have been smarter had I shaded just the box and then come back and paint it on top of that. Hey, I'm not always the smartest person, so I guess, you know, whatever. In my defense, y'all, it is kind of early. It is kind of early, so there we go. I'm gonna fake it till I make it, y'all. Do y'all do that? Fake it till you make it? That's my motto. So, y'all, uh, Facebook reached out to me about my case and said that they were gonna examine my case for me. They only wanted 25 pieces of paper documentation. <laughs> so guess what I did yesterday afternoon? got 25 pieces of paper documentation. I didn't know there was 25 ways you could try to ask somebody, what is your identity? How do you, how do we know that you own this page? And um, what do you think happened to your account? Basically is what it was. So, I mean, you've got, I had a passport and a driver's license. I put all that on one piece of paper, you know. To me, if I have a state issued driver's license and a passport, I'm, I'm pretty good. So we'll see. We'll and until then. I'll just have to keep using Ashley's account. But y'all, that's a pain in the behind. So I just kind of come in here and I just do a little brush stroke after each. All I do is I um, shade around the perimeter, and I'm not going to outline this because y'all know outline is something we normally do. But I'm not outlining this. I think for a bird feeder, I've got plenty of paint on there. So, uh, now obviously once this dries, I will poly it and then we will put it together at we. Bruce will put it together. I, I stand around for moral support and maybe hold the roof pieces together until he gets them all 
nail and he does nail he uses a brad nailer and glue so he puts glue on these edges like this and there's actually a video on youtube y'all um you know ashley um uh, debbie ashley's been sick so her mama's pulling the weight as you can kind of tell and i'm kind of well she just i don't know that's a good question i know she'll be here as soon as she can but uh with her uh I think she came out and posted that the, they all had COVID and what she's, Zach and Carly seem fine. She seems fine, except for she just feels a lot, a huge amount of fatigue. Like just kind of, you know, just can't get any of her bearings together kind of thing. I hope she does. Uh, but as y'all can tell, she's been MIA, you know, with good reason. So that means mama pulls the weight while, um, while all that happens. So, yeah, I bet, of course y'all, she's my baby. She's probably tired of me calling her. <laughs> and y'all, I'm not one to be in my kids' business. I don't try to, I mean, I'm interested in my kids and I'm a part of their life and I wanna be a part of their life, but I do not ever try to, you know, be intrusive, tell them what to do, get in their space. I'm very kind of standoffish, but here lately I have made sure, and I've been calling her every day and I said, you know, I'm like, baby girl, I know you're tired of me calling you, but I'm I'm your mama, and I don't care how old you are, I'll always be your mama. And so, she has uh, been struggling, and it's really just fatigue. I mean, I guess be grateful, you know, she hasn't had any other more serious symptoms, but, you know, it's kind of one of those that, with that level of fatigue, you can't really get a whole lot done. And, you know, between taking care of Carly and, and stuff like that, and washing clothes and just doing the minimum, you know, I think that's really all she can do at this point. But I sure hope she does come back next week because I'll miss her, y'all. <laughs> I miss her. All right, let's see. Ava says, will plywood last at least two years if you probably paint the back and keep off the ground? Good question. You know, Ava, probably it will. But let me say this. Uh, years ago, Bruce and I used pine plywood. And we had great luck with it. Now, this was a, you know, this would have been in the 80s, right? And then what I noticed is that, um, boy, the quality just kept going down and down and down. And it just seems that that's kind of the way the world is. So, I said all that to say, Ava, make sure if you can, when you're buying wood, be picky. Go through it. If it looks really already split and warped, or uh, damaged in any way, I wouldn't buy it. So before we started buying MBO, hold on a minute, I gotta get some black in here. Before we started buying MBO, y'all, we went to, this was years ago, we would go to Home Depot and Lowe's, right? And we would get put wood. And the joke, the running joke that he and I had was come on, get in the truck, I wanna get in a bad mood, let's go try to get some wood because you know, it's just one of those that you show up and that day that just they just didn't have anything that looked worth a flip. So when you're buying it, really try to be picky. If that uh, if you're buying like a birch or even an oak can be the same thing in pine is usually the worst. If that if that sheet is bowed, don't buy it. If that sheet is already splitting on the sides, don't buy it. If that sheet has a lot of those what I call softball looking knots in there, don't buy it. So kind of, we would, what we did is we would go and we'd put a cart here and we would pull out every sheet from the aisle and we would look and turn over and look and turn over. And if we didn't like it, we'd put it on the cart. If we liked it, we put it over here. Then we put all the bad sheets back onto the aisle, got the good sheets that we wanted and drove out. You know, that's how we bought wood for a long time. So just be real picky. And I think you can get a couple years out of it if you'll do that. And if you'll make sure you have a lot of poly and you know which it sounds like you're doing that make sure that you uh seal those edges you'll probably get several years and honestly there's there's some plywood you might get five or six or ten years out of but the problem is how do you know in the old days you would have gotten that nowadays not the way they're making lumber and i guess it's because they're growing it so fast or cutting it too early i don't know i don't you know I don't know enough about logging and all of that kind of stuff. So um, be picky when you're buying it. And I think if you're picky and you treat it right, you should be good for several years. That would be my guess. 
That would be my guess. So here's my little guy. I just did, right, not a whole lot of decoration on there, but enough that as a bird feeder, I think it's gonna look really cute. I even noticed I, I have the eyes that are closed and I gave them a few little brush strokes down there for eyelashes. Eyelashes are really easy to do if you just do them like that. If you feel like you can't do eyelashes, you can always do that. All right, let me put some white on here, y'all, like so. And then, of course, I gotta come in here and put some highlights on my little birdie, on my little birdie. Hopefully, Ava, I answered your question. Uh, sometimes I can get a little long-winded, but it's just the way it is. Wood is hard to, it's one of those you can go to Home Depot or wherever, and one day you get lucky as heck everything looks good and you can go back for six weeks every day and everything looks bad so this little guy i'll come back later and i will put a white dot on his eye okay but for pretty much he's done other than that little white dot okay and then of course that's the sides let's do this guy right here morning hey leticia how are you she says those are so cute oh thank you What's the thickness of the wood you recommend? You know, Brandy, if you are doing a bigger project, say anything above two and a half, three feet, anything above that, definitely don't go thinner than half inch. If you're doing a small project, like we sell tons of little things. Now we keep using the, the half inch no matter what, because we gotta put cold rolled steel in our stuff. So, but if uh, I wouldn't go half inch, if you're going something shorter than two and a half feet, you probably can get away with three quarter. I would not do one quarter at all because that's, that stuff is really gonna warp on you. And it's just like what I told Ava when you're talking about wood. Uh, we could go honestly, and, and maybe I need to do this one day. I think I did some of this in the academy. Um, I could go to any of your major box stores, right? And I could spend a good hour, uh, I don't know if they'd let me do it, but I'm saying I could stand there and spend a good hour talking through, pulling a sheet out of the aisle, out of the, you know how they have them in those aisles, pulling them out and showing you why I would or would not take this piece of the plywood. Because it's kind of like what I was telling Ava while ago. It's, if that plywood is warped in any way, if that plywood already looks like the sides are not, are kind of splitting a little bit, or the sides have a lot of holes, wouldn't take it. If you got a lot of uh, football knots in there, I won't take it. So uh, every sheet of wood, as you know, just is different. So I would say half inch on anything above two and a half, three feet, and then I would not do anything less than three quarter. I'm sorry, less than three eighths. You don't need three quarter. Three quarter is too heavy. We did, year, for one year, I think we did three quarter. <clears throat> Y'all, and it nearly killed my back. I mean, I'm pretty strong, but geez, you know. So hopefully that answered your question, but we do have, I, that, now that I think about it, we have a video in the Academy where I talk a lot about that because y'all, and there's even a, um, I think I have an opt-in, I should have posted it, where I talk about, um, whenever people talk about yard art, they normally, or door hangers, they normally are talking about either MDF. Most people are gonna wanna use MDF or plywood. We use MDO. And um, that's because of years and years and years of knowing what's gonna happen to that stuff. There's a company called Build Across who I have a lot of respect for. I admire what they do. They're good peeps. And uh, I called them one day. They're out of Louisiana. And uh, I called them. They do everything. Build Across does everything out of MDF. And so I called them one day. Oh, thank you, Debbie. Uh, and said, uh, because, you know, I, I'm married to somebody who's kind of really old school, you know. And he and I talk about MDF and he's like, I don't understand how they can get away with doing MDF out of things like door hangers or yard art. And I said, well, honey, I think it's just because people don't know, you know? And um, so we called Build Across one day and I said, look, my husband and I are having this discussion 
and I would like it if you could tell me who is right or wrong. And I told the guy that the guy that answers the phone, he's like, oh, no, I don't know about getting in the middle of a husband and wife argument. We were laughing. I said, uh, my husband says if you put MDO outside, it's going to fall apart. I say a lot of people are using it in outdoor applications, and they are saying it's okay. And the guy kind of hem hawed around, and he said, well, ma'am, your husband is kind of right. What we say at Build Across and you can go type in the words build a cross. They have a lot of stuff, all MDF, indoor. But if you're looking for indoor projects, that's where I would go. And, um, cause we don't do a lot of MDF. And uh, he said, your husband's right. If it's out there in direct rainfall mainly, or snow, anything with moisture, sleet, snow, rain, you know, whatever, it is gonna, it is gonna fall apart. Now, if you're using it as a door hanger, you probably get away with it because it's up underneath as long as you got a covered area. So, uh, anyway, I got tickled at the guy when he answered the phone. I told him, I need you to solve an argument between me and my husband. He's like, oh, ma'am, I don't know about that. <laughs> All right. Now, when this is dry, I am going to come back and put a dot in my black eye right there on my... Um, on my little birdie, but I think he's really, really cute. And it's pretty doggone simple. And then of course, this is the under part of um, the roof. This is the roof piece and here's a roof piece. And they would, they would go pretty much like, let me get it right here, like that. So that would be my roof. So this would be underneath the roof. And this is one side of the roof. Let me get it this way. And this is the other side. And then here would be my walls, y'all. Here's one wall, and here's the other one. Super cute. We have this at the store as a blank if you're interested in it. And we also have a YouTube video showing you how to put it together. Thank y'all for joining me. Y'all come out and see us at the store if you're local. We got lots of good looking stuff out there. Paula and a bunch of peeps are over there working, unloading the trailer. I'm supposed to be over there, but I'm, I'm gonna hit it in here in a little bit. And uh, if you think you might want to join the Academy, there's a link in there. You can click that and get on the wait list. It actually opens up on Monday. And we will see you guys later. I hope y'all have a good one. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend, y'all.